Welcome you guys to TekkenWorship.com. My name is Matt and uh, today we are going to learn how to use Ableton Live as a loop and click software uh, to use in your live worship setting. Um, what you're going to need is Ableton Live, which is right here, and then also some kind of MIDI controller. Um, what we use at our church right now is the Korg NanoPad in which we did a uh, blog post on a product review for the Korg Nano series below this one. And also we show you in an earlier post how to set up a MIDI controller in Ableton. Uh, so go ahead and get that connected and pull this up right here. Um, the Ableton file, this exact file, and also the click file right here, I will post uh, below this video so that you can download those and go along with us or do with it as you uh, do. So as you'll see here we have a songs list, a click list, and we're going to need to add a loops list. Uh, each column is just a different section of what you want to play in each song and each row is a different song. So everything on this row will play when this is activated everything on this row will play when this is activated, everything on this row will play when this is activated, and so on and so forth. So right now we have a song section and a click section, but we're gonna need a loop section. And so what we're gonna do is go right here and you're gonna right click, and you'll see insert audio track. You're gonna insert that and right click it again, and you can rename it loops or loop whichever you prefer. And um, just briefly I'll show you, um, you'll take the original mp3 of the song and drag it over into here. And while that's loading, you'll take the actual loop of the song and drag it over into the loop section. You may not have loops for every song and that's fine. Next you're going to want to set the time signature and the BPM for each song. And you can see these are already done right here. So what we're going to do is um, to get the BPM for this song, you're always going to want it to be the BPM of whatever the loop is. So if you'll double click on this guy right here, uh, you'll see that is 187.55. And you're going to want to right click right here and edit launch tempo 187.55. And then click enter. And then if you right click it again, you can set the time signature as 404. And you're going to want the loop section and the click section here to always be warped. You'll see this little warp button right here. Um, these two sections always need to have this highlighted. That's unhighlighted. This is highlighted. So make sure. Um, it usually does it automatically, but you'll want to go through each one and make sure that this is highlighted. What warp does is it warps whatever is enabled in warp to whatever this BPM is right here. So since this is the same, it will uh, just play it at that same tempo. But if our click tracks here, you'll notice that it's originally at 120, but it will make it 187 because it is warped. So it's just warping it to the BPMs that are indicated right here. One thing you need to know is that the songs over here need to not be warped and you always want to make sure that warp is not highlighted on the songs because if you're in practice and you want to hear the song, which I'll show you how to set this all up later, um, you uh, don't want it to be warped to whatever this number is. You want it to play like the original, like it was recorded. Now we're going to take a look down here and you'll notice that you have this pan to the left and you always want this pan to the right. Um, if you're using a stereo DI box, you'll be able to make these two different channels, left channel and right channel, and make them two different channels on the soundboard um, so that you can control each one uh, so that the click can just go to the monitors and the loop can just go to just the house. And so make sure that this is panned right and this is panned left, you can vice versa, whatever you want to do. Uh, you want to make sure that these numbers right here are highlighted for the click and loop section. And you want to make sure that this one is not highlighted. And the reason that is, is if you trigger this, 
and all three of them are highlighted, whatever is highlighted will play when you trigger it. And you don't want this highlighted because it's the original song and you don't want to be playing over the original song. So now let's go ahead and pull out our MIDI controller. Uh, what we're going to do is go over to this little MIDI button right here and click that and you'll see everything turns blue. Uh, that is okay, do not trip out. Uh, what you're going to do is, you see that this nano pad has little pads and um, the first row is what we use for each song, so song one through six. So if you'll go over to song one, you want to go right here, highlight the first song and hit the first pad and go to the second song and continue to do that for all the songs that you have. Four. And also right here you'll see a little stop button. You want to click that and hit another button. Uh, just in case something goes wrong and you all get off, you can just make sure that stops everything. And then go over here to the solo and make it another button. And we'll explain why in just a minute. Um, if you want to add other buttons, just go to the function that you want to do um, say you wanted to control the volume, if you had a little knob, you could go right here, click this, and roll the knob, and it will pick up um, that knob. And so go ahead and click out of the MIDI. So now we're back to the original page. If you'll go ahead and just click your first button for your first song, you'll notice. Go ahead, and then you can press stop. And then you press it again, and this time you'll be able to hear the loop after so many sections. And then if you want to go to the second one, go to the third one, go to the fourth one, and then stop. And so over here we uh, made that little button for the solo section here. Go ahead and click that, and you'll see that it solos this, and then go ahead and press the first button. So you'll notice it plays the original song, so if you're in practice and you want to hear the song, just uh, press your little music button and press the number of the song, and you can listen to the song. Um, and then go ahead and try it again. And when you press it again, it'll go back to the click track. Go back. Back to the click. Back to the song. And then go back to the click. And that's uh, what you would do in a live setting. If you guys want, uh, you can go to the Ask Me page um, over in the column on the website and uh, you can ask us questions and let us know what topics you want to hear. If you have questions about this video or other videos, uh, go ahead and it'll send us a message and if you leave us your email, we'll email you back right away or we'll just post it to the site. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching techandworship.com.